Indeed, I think there are two theories that we need to address. Uh, the first is the diet heart hypothesis, which suggests that what you eat determines your heart disease risk. And the theory is that it's you take a high fat diet that raises your cholesterol and that then clogs your arteries, which causes heart attack. That is the diet heart hypothesis. The lipid hypothesis is a subdivision of that. And that is that cholesterol in the bloodstream is the direct cause of heart disease. There are two separate hypotheses which often get confused. In other words, the one might be true, but the other one might not be true. The lipids might cause heart disease, but it might be nothing to do unrelated to the diet. So I'll be addressing both the diet heart and the lipid hypotheses and in, in my presentation. Professor, it has been contended in the evidence uh, before this inquiry that a high-fat diet uh, is dangerous, and it is dangerous particularly because of its effect uh, uh, and its, the, the effects of or the co its cause. Uh, or causally related to uh, atherogenic heart disease. So I'm sure, will you be covering that in your presentation as well? I'll cover the history of the evolution of the idea, and then I'll show the newer evidence which suggests that the data were interpreted ahead of the findings, and suggests that the, the theory should never have been supported, that the evidence today is that the theory is wrong. Please proceed. Please. Thank you. So uh, the first slide is from an article I wrote in the South African Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which followed the debate I had with Professor Jacques Rousseau at the University of Cape Town. It was the call of the 2012 University of Cape Town Faculty of Health Sciences centenary debate. And it's just there on record that, uh, that I have, in fact, published a paper on the information that I'm going to present. And also the information does is part of the real meal revolution. So the story begins in 1953 with this publication by Ansel Keys in the Journal of the Mount Sinai Hospital. And what Keys decided personally was that saturated fat in the diet is the cause of heart disease. And then it's my interpretation that he went out to find the evidence that would support his hypothesis, which isn't the way you do science. You first collect the data and then you draw up your your conclusions. So what he did was he showed that in these six countries, it seemed to him that the more fat in the diet, in other words, the percentage calories from fat, the more the heart disease death rate increased. So whereas in Japan, it was relatively low, and these people were eating a low fat diet. In the United States, the people were eating much more fat and also had much higher heart disease rates. Now, what one has to understand is that this is an associational study. And associational studies may not, cannot prove causation. It doesn't matter for, well, they, under one circumstance which we'll discuss, they may be able to sh suggest causation. But they cannot prove causation because the assumption is that the only difference in the people living in the United States from the people living in Japan is that the Japanese eat less fat. And nothing else is different. They all do the same amount of physical activity. They all exercise as much there and so on. And of course that's ludicrous. Or that they save the same genetic pool of people. And of course that's nonsense. So association cannot prove causation. And unfortunately it's something we don't teach. I know our students, in my experience, will say, but, but Keyes proved the association between cholesterol and the blood and heart disease or whatever. Didn't. He suggested an hypothesis which needs then to be studied with proper research methods. And in fact, we teach that the naivety of such an interpretation of associate attributes is now classroom demonstrated. So if I wanted to tell students the worst example of associational studies, this would be it. And unfortunately, that's not what is remembered. So two uh, epidemiologists came along and in 1954, they said, well, hold on, Mr. Keyes or Dr. Keyes, you only included the six countries. You didn't, you had data for 22 countries. When we put all 22 countries, the picture doesn't look this, as good. The relationship is still there, but it's not as good. And then they said, but you know, we must look at abnormalities because the paradox is what you want to see in science. And you'll notice here, Finland has a very high rate of heart disease despite the same amount of fat in the diet as say Portugal or Mexico. So it looks like there's something else that's involved. It couldn't just be the fat in the diet, there may well be something else. And they concluded, sorry, and so that's the first point. 
And the second point I want to introduce here is can you ever use an associational study to prove causation? And the answer is yes, if what we call the hazard ratio, which is a measure of how strong the relationship is, if that hazard ratio exceeds four, five, six, and we're going to talk at length about the hazard ratio, then you can start to say the association is so strong that it's probably causal. And so we come to this rule, the Austin Bradford Hill rule, is that association cannot prove causation unless the odds or hazard ratio is very high, much greater than 2.0. And the reason why I mention this right at the outset is that m most of nutritional science is based on associational studies in which hazard ratios are used. And it's very important we look at the value of those hazard ratios. If the hazard ratio is below two, we should throw out the findings as non-suggestive of causation. And what's happened in science over the last 50 years is the bar for causation has been dropped. And now the bar is so low that you can do as any study to prove anything prove causes anything in nutrition. If you drop the bar low enough, you'll be able to prove anything. And that's the issue. And we're going to look extensively as ha at odds ratios or hazard ratios. And unfortunately, I said honored more in its breach than its observation. The, the, the unit that has most honored this in its breach than in its observation is the Harvard School of Public Health, which has produced 2,000 papers on nutrition science in the last 20 years. Majority of them based on associational studies and the majority with hazard ratios which are between 1.3 and 1.5. Which if Austin Bradford Hill was around today he would say that the data are, is ridiculous, you must throw it out. But what we do instead is we say well now we've got 15 studies with hazard ratios of 1.2 and we put them into a meta-analysis and now the meta-analysis proves causation and it can't. It doesn't matter how many studies you have. You cannot prove causation that way. And so it is my argument that the reason why we got it wrong in nutrition is because we changed the rules of what should be the, the, the we, we dropped the bar so low that we started interpreting causation when the hazard ratio was, was so low. And, and I'll discuss that at length.